do it to me one more time. I'd rather not. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's Rowdy.com Big Three following the LifeLock 400 from Chicagoland Speedway, Bassmasters, Buzz Cutler to talk about this fine event. And David Rudiman yeah. had his asterisk removed. I don't care what anybody says. A rain-shortened win or a fuel mileage win... It's not an asterisk. ...is different from a real win in how you feel about it and how the public sees it. It is. And this was validation. It is different, but a win is a win nonetheless. You can say that as much as you want. But I'm telling you, if you listen to David Ruderman after that race, this was validation. That's what a win is for these guys. He definitely took it that way. No it's doubt about it. It's not a crew chief it. win. It's a driver win. David Ruderman drove his butt off, passed Jeff Gordon, worked him over, got to the front. Very impressive. Let's hear from David Ruderman, shall we? Yeah, it does help my confidence. Every win helps confidence, you know, and, and that's that's always uh, going to be uh, that's always going to be that way. But uh, you know, we still got uh, we still got some work cut out for us to get in the chase. But we're a lot closer than we were. So uh, that's going to be our goal, trying to get in the chase. Well, there you go, Cutler. I mean, he's confident. He's got a shot at the chase. How confident are you? I'm pretty confident. Look at who he has to beat in order to get into the top 12. Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt Jr. David Rudiman has been fast. He's been consistent. You can't say either of those things about Mark Martin or Dale Earnhardt Jr. He had the speed on a downforce racetrack. That's good. But, Cutler, if he passes Mark Martin and he passes Dale Jr., he will find himself in 13th position. He needs to get into the top 12. That means he's going to have to pass Clint Boyer. He's going to have to pass one of the Roush Fenway cars. And don't forget, Carl Edwards was pretty fast, yeah. which is a good sign for that team. Greg Biffle Greg was Biffle pretty fast. Greg Biffle is making it easy on David Well, Greg Ruben. Biffle was fast, but dropped a valve and then the engine kind of blew up there. So What's interesting, though, is if you look at the tracks ahead, Right, you've got Indianapolis, Pocono, Watkins, Glen are your yep. next three tracks. Not downforce-style no. tracks, and then on, only then do you get it's to Michigan. Michigan. So it'll be interesting to see on those tracks if Rudiman can find an edge over these other guys we're talking about. You know, this win, too, comes to put him 96 points out, so he's been decent fast. He's faster than a lot of guys out there right now, so I think he's got a shot to make the chase, but he's going to be one of those guys fighting for his life. And speaking of Carl Edwards... Hey, we've been in this position before with David yeah. Rudiman, haven't we? We have. Speaking of Carl Edwards, you want to talk about Mark Martin? What? Isn't Carl Edwards issue number two? Oh, I thought he was issue number three, but let's make him issue number two. Let's talk about Carl Edwards and his second place run, but it was more than just a second place run at Chicagoland, wasn't it's, it? It's like Rudiman in the sense that it was speed, and these two guys have not been up at the front as much as your usual suspects, your Jimmys and your Jeffs and your Dennys and your Kyles, but both those guys were fast, and Carl Edwards... Finally, I think this is probably the first time in a year to a year and a half that he has looked this fast. Looked like he was in a race-winning car at the end of the race. None of the Roush Fenway cars have looked like that this year until now. And the question is, is this a trend? Well, one race does not a trend make. While it was good to see, and it gives the Bowtie Brigade some hope, and it gives the Roush Fenway lovers some hope, again, I'm going to wait until Michigan to see if they can repeat this sort of speedy performance on a downforce track. This was this was a one-off. And yes, it was good to see. It's only Carl Edwards' second top five on the season, believe it or well, not. You know, you know, if you listen to Carl Edwards, you'll find that he shares, I think, a little of our skepticism. I know we can run that well. We've done it, and we did it tonight. We just have to figure out how to do that every week, and I, I hope this is, I hope this is uh, something that we can go back, talk about on Monday, figure out why our car was so much different this week than it was, uh, you know, that it has been, and, and, and maybe apply it. All right, so let's move on now to issue number three. Oh, I'm so mad at you! Mark Martin. I'm so mad at you! Juan Pablo Montoya. Really, Juan Pablo Montoya. I guess the issue is more his than Mark Martin's. They were racing hard. They were racing hard towards the end of the race for 15th, and, and Juan Pablo basically said, look, Mark, Mar Mark Martin has to take driving lessons. You know, Mark Martin has a reputation as a nice guy, and he is a nice guy, and I think it's very true of Mark Martin that if you are faster than he in the early portions of the race, he will let you go. He knows how to manage a race. This is one thing Mark Martin knows how to do. But the thing people forget about Mark Martin is how tenacious he is. If it is coming down to it, and he's trying to earn a position at the end of the race, especially when you look at the points and you find that, like, as of today, the man is 37 points out of the chase, those three or four points for 15th position versus 16th, that's big to Mark Martin. He's going to race you hard, and he's really not going to apologize. For and it. it's true that he's 37 points out, and what Juan Pablo Montoya may not have the perspective to see because he's so in the moment and he's so passionate about 
about winning and about performance is that Mark Martin is 37 points out after the race. Mar uh, Juan Pablo Montoya is 242 points out. So while it might not make sense to Juan Pablo to fight for a 15th because it's not going to do him any good, he's, he's done, he's not going to make the chase regardless, if Mark Martin picks up a position a race, picks up a exactly. couple of positions at the end of every race, he could get back into the top 12 fairly easily. You know, Mark Martin... Well, I don't know about easily, Well, but they, more to the point, I think, Cutler, yeah. that's how he's going to have to race from here to Richmond. If you look at the way Junior and Mark Martin, that garage, is running right now, both those guys are going to have to race like that all the way to Richmond if they want to make the chase. They're just going to have to do it, and everyone else around them better get used to the idea. Yeah, because you can't, neither of those cars can count on consistent speed to carry the day. They're going to have to fight tooth and nail for their right to party. Exactly. All right. Speaking of partying. That has been your Rowdy.com Big 3 for today. Do join us at the website, which is also known as Rowdy.com. You might be watching this very video there you could. as we speak. You can watch all our videos there, including our we did a gum out commercial, a new gum out commercial. We've done... Gets the gum out. It does get the gum out. Anyway, join us there. We'd love to see you. We'll be back tomorrow with more Big 3 stuff. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.